and yeah. Great, and hopefully John will join us. Um, so hi everyone, again, Becky Bash from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And um, this is a working group meeting of the Age and Dementia Friendly Community um, project for Amherst. Um, and so today we're just mostly going to touch base on the status of the survey and the responses that we've been getting. Um, Nicole's gonna present what, um, a little bit of analysis on who has responded and, and how people got the survey. Um, and then we're gonna talk more about um, listening sessions or public forums, other ways to engage older adults in the community um, and people who care for them. Um, and yeah, and then if any outreach um, that we're gonna do about those listening sessions. So, um, so far, um, Nicole did an analysis of um, the survey that responses that we got last week, but we've already gotten more. So we're at about 600 responses, which is really great. Right. Um, which is over 10% of people over 65. So um, that's a really great response rate. And um, we'll look, Nicole will present a little bit more um, on the, the people that we are hearing from. Um, I still don't see John on here. Um, so I was gonna check in with him because he was gonna start the analysis with some students. I think that he I'll give started. John a call. Okay, great. Um, so I guess, Nicole, you can go ahead and start. I think John's seen the, um, the data that you have, but if you want to go ahead and present what you have so far, that'd be great. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I looked up the um, survey engagement by race and ethnicity and then by gender identity as well. I looked up the data this morning and we were at 587 surveys, so over a hundred in the last week. And when I just looked now, we're at 616. So like another <laughs> like 30 or so surveys have been entered since then on the English convenience. but for this data, I didn't include those from today. So we've had a lot of English, only one Spanish survey has been um, submitted online and we haven't had anyone that speaks Portuguese that chose that as their preferred language yet. So that's something to keep in mind. And then from the 2018 Massachusetts Healthy Aging Community, the population of 60 plus was around 4,000 and the population of 65 plus was almost 3,000. So I'm assuming that the numbers have grown a little bit in both categories, but that's a good sample size when we look at our survey data. So on the um, healthy aging profile, we have about 91.9% um, of our population is white. And based on our survey collection, we're at about 89%. And all of the other percentages for race and ethnicity are pretty similar. So I do believe we're like hitting those targets. I feel comfortable about those based on this data. And then even for Hispanic slash Latino, we've hit 2.24%, where in 2018 we we're at 1.8. So I think it's shown some change in the community as well that we can look into more when we write the report. And then just looking at survey distribution by site, um, as you can see across the top, out of the 15 um, options to get your survey, um, white or Caucasian residents got it from 14 of those sites. And then that number slowly drops when you look at different ethnicities. So, um, and then another thing that I've noticed is that Starvos has yet to reach anyone. So I'm not sure if our surveys have gone out there or if the people there got them from somewhere else and chose not to indicate that as their place from receiving the survey. 
And then another thing that is noted is that only one person who identified as American Indian or Alaska Native was reached by mail. And no one who identified as Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander was reached by mail. Um, I think John knows more about how the mailing was done, but I thought this was an interesting point. And then Craig's Place, Senior Spirit, Amherst Survival Center, the League of Women's Voters of Amherst, Engage Amherst, and the Racial Equity Task Force Facebook site haven't reached any groups other than white or Caucasian residents. So that's something I think is interesting. And then, And then by gender, looking at um, the 2018 community profile, it's about 56% female, 43% male. And our current, our survey is about 30% um, male and 67% female. And then gender non-binary and prefer not to say come in a little under 1%. And we haven't, um, no one's identified as transgender or intersex yet on our survey. So that's a perspective that we might be missing. And then this data is pretty interesting based on um, who has and hasn't gotten the survey based on gender. So um, the gender non-binary respondent was only reached through the Amherst newsletter, which has been one of our most popular sources from people to taking the survey. And since unlike um, the race and ethnicity, um, SurveyMonkey can spot sig statistical significance because um, there's over a hundred, I believe, respondents in each group for male versus female. So you can see um, the darker colored squares are where it's statistically significant. So more males received it in the, more males received it in the mail. Um, only males received it from Craig's place. There were no woman or any other gender identity that got it there. And then it goes on. And what was interesting about this is when I look through some of the survey data, there was a lot of statistically significant differences between males versus females in their responses. So for example, um, more males rated Amherst as an excellent place to age compared to females. Significantly more females felt unsafe in the community compared to males. And then significantly more females were concerned with paying for utilities. And lastly, significantly more females live alone compared to males. So it was about 34% females lived alone and 20% of males. And then lastly, just on the mass healthy aging in 2019, they predicted about 30% of 65 plus do live alone. So I think that looking at this data, it's important to get more male outreach, I think to just to balance it a little bit more. And that is all I have. Thanks. Yeah, the male female split is um, pretty typical. I think when we do these surveys, it's generally females are more likely to respond. Um, and there's a, a lot in the other category. And we were just um, talking, I was just talking with Haley and Maureen before the meeting. And um, those may be um, people that the Amherst, the uh, ambassadors or you call them Haley um, yeah. are calling people and I think you said about 60 were, were contacted through that through phone calls yep is that right yeah okay. yeah that makes a big portion of our other group a lot of write-ins mention the ambassador or okay. emails from like town officials of some sort they're not very okay. specific others though okay does anyone have any questions on this? Maybe you could stop sharing. Um, yeah. Any questions or comments? I, I actually apologize. I thought I had sent out an email from Amherst Neighbors again to go out at the end of last week and it was sitting there and on my mailbox this morning. Oh. <laughs> and so anyway, I sent it and it will get sent again in three days for everybody who doesn't open it. So. Oh, great. 
Um, anyway, I'm, I'm sure we will get a response. And I included the information of how many of us had responded and how many hadn't. <clears throat> looks like Chad has uh, raised his hand. Yeah, Chad. Uh, two or three questions, some probably been answered. Um, I'm looking forward to the report. I'm wondering if the raw data will be available. Um, the more um, folks that we have uh, analyze the data, the more um, information we'll get out of it. Uh -huh. So that was one. Um, also, um, when does it actually close? I, I assume it's going to close before the in-person interviews. So those two, those, those are my two questions right now. Um, so in-person interviews, is that, are you, because we hadn't planned those yet. Right now, the Amherst, um, the senior center ambassadors are calling people and going over the survey on um, over the phone. So I think that's sort of what we were thinking of in terms of interviews, unless you, you think we should do more interviews. Um, and then, yeah, um, we haven't set an end date yet. I was hoping John would be on because I think a lot of it was um, he wanted to analyze the, the mailed data um, for the housing information. Um, and yes, the the data we can we can make it available to to if you if there are people who want to analyze it. I think John was going to work with some students and um, maybe Mila um, on some of that analysis. But we're happy to have any help <laughs> on on doing that um, and any suggestions too. If there's specific data that you want us to look at, um, we'd be happy to look at that. Um, so yeah, I think in terms of closing out, Maureen, did you guys do a second mailing? Cause we were talking about that. Yeah, uh, Haley, could, yeah. could you speak to that? Yeah, we week? did about 400 letters. Um, so only about a hundred people had returned their survey from that initial, uh, initial 500 mailing. Um, so that went out last Wednesday and you know we'll start to see hopefully some responses trickle in from that. But I think John had said that they were already up to about 25, 20 to 25% of um, people completing the survey from the mailing. Okay. And do you happen to know if those one, the second mailing was um, included the link, the same link the first mailing did, or did you do the convenience? It had a, had a cover letter that did have the links on it, but it was just the English version of the survey that we mailed out. But it, it um, and it had uh, links to the mailed survey in Spanish and Portuguese. Okay. Yeah. And Mila, did you have a yeah. question or comment? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a comment. I was hoping to get some of the data from John, but I haven't gotten any. The other okay. comment. The other comment I want to make is that I'm not surprised at the response rate of the non-English speaking uh, yeah. potential respondents, Latinos and the Portuguese. Uh, I'm not surprised at the very low returns. They don't usually, I should not say this as a researcher, I should not say they don't, but based on experience, mailed questionnaires, is usually very low from the, I wonder whether we could do it by in person. Is that too much to be, to reach them or would that be too much work if we did some personal interviewing or even group interviewing if they came to the senior center? Here's a suggestion. Um, yeah. There are several um, Pentecostal church churches in Amherst, uh, my thought was leave a handful in the church, but also first interface with uh, the pastor, mm -hmm. a five minute talk about um, what is it about, why it's important for his specific parishioners to answer. Um, and I'm willing to do that. Um, 
if there's no one here with uh, Spanish. Um, well, I wanted to speak contact. on the Spanish. I wanted to chip on the Spanish end. Is okay. Juana uh, was going to be helping Haley and I do some cold calling last week, targeting some certain bilingual uh, Spanish speakers or even just Spanish speakers. And she was out sick, unfortunately. That was unexpected, but she's going to be back in this Wednesday. Uh, she does attend the Spanish Mass at St. Bridget's on Sunday. So I have a feeling she can probably just handpick five or six people that she knows from the buildings next door in Whalen and Clark House and call them and maybe get four or five surveys completed or attempt well, to that, Helen? Of a much yeah. larger number. Uh, a whole I was thinking of a much more larger number, a whole congregation. I'm willing to take it to the two Korean churches, mm -hmm. North uh, and East uh, Amherst. But that's that's just some ideas. Right. Well, Juan is only here two hours a week, so I was trying to make it manageable for her uh, in, in one day. And I don't know when we're stopping doing these interviews, but if she works on it for a few weeks, I was just wanting to give her a manageable chunk once a week. Yeah, I think if someone could, um, you know, if Chad, do you speak Spanish or, or are you thinking you need to speak with the pastor and have them? No, make I, a I don't speak Spanish or Korean, but there's two Korean churches as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. I can yeah. do a lot more than a staff person because I'm a volunteer. <laughs> right, right. Uh, there is a Spanish mass at 1230, I believe. Uh, the priest does not speak Spanish, but there's always a translator that translates oh. all the prayers. Okay. He would say it in English and somebody uh, who is a Spanish speaker, an English speaker would tell it, uh, say the prayers in Spanish. Maybe we can talk to him. This is the parish priest at uh, St. Bridget mm. that probably can uh, can tell the uh, during the Spanish Mass at 12.30 to cooperate with uh, responding to the questionnaire. I can talk to, make a point of talking to Juana on Wednesday because I know she goes to that Mass. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. So she could probably link up with that minister and maybe get them the Spanish surveys. And if anyone needs help, she could possibly help out with those. Yeah, yeah. that would be great. Do you, how many copies do you have left, Maureen, of the Spanish, do you know? Or uh, Haley? Oh, I have at least 20 here on site. So I think we have, I think we should just talk about what, when we want to have the end date for the survey. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. well, I want to give time. If, if you can get to one of those masses, that would be great to mm -hmm. give them some time. So. Um, I would and say even end if she, of April, if you think that would be enough. And even if Juana so. doesn't get to the mass, I don't know if she's going to the mass regularly, but she knows a lot of people in that congregation. Yeah. Yeah. And then people, I'm sure we could reach out to people. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like we have, you know, a big sort of restriction on the end date. So, um, you know, I think we should turn to Becky if, if you, if it's like we could go to the end of May or even into June. So I think it, I think it's really going to be based on, vol, you know, Becky's timeline with PVPC, as well as if there's surveys that are coming back in hard copy, we need volunteers to help input it into the survey monkey. I think those are the two key pieces to, to consider. Yeah, well, I liked Becky's idea of doing through the end of April. That gives us more time to do this special outreach, um, but without extending it too long, right? Because I don't yeah. think we want to have it out in the air for, you know, too long. And I appreciate, Chad, your um, offer to bring surveys to the Korean churches. Our only <laughs> problem there is we don't have a Korean translator, I don't think, unless you guys know of one. Um, we don't have the surveys translated into Korean, so that's unfortunately a, a barrier. Um, is, there, is there any money, Becky, for a translator? Uh, yeah. UMass has a translator program, and I do know someone over there who speaks Korean. Yeah, so uh, we reached out to yeah. UMass Translation Services, um, and they, in their response, email response, they said that they can translate um, you know, uh, Word documents, um, but they do not have the capacity to provide, you know, over the phone or in person translation services. Um, the town does have um, money um, 
uh, for translation services. So if 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 there was a need for that, we could certainly look into that. Yeah, um, it's worth. I mean, it's probably going to be five hundred dollars or something to translate this survey into Korean. But if you know, if you think that would we would get responses, it's worthwhile. It's just. Um, or is it more worth oh, it to pay no. the translator to just do the English survey with someone over the phone in Korean? Yeah, I'm they won't do that. that. They'll, they they won't. won't. Okay. Service. Yeah, All I'm right. thinking there's an online program you can plug it into and it'll spit it out. That's Sometimes not it's not accurate, though. Yeah. Well, with an eye check after, that's not $500. Hmm. Yeah, um, it's worth chat if you want to reach out to someone at the Korean churches and see if you know if if there's interest there. Um, you know, we we can try to get those translated. Um, it just might be it might be a bit of a okay. lift. Well, we we've got the two black churches, the two Korean churches, and there's more than that in Spanish. Um, yeah, I could take uh, uh, the Korean and see if there's an online uh, translator that you can plug these, you know, digitize the survey and plug it into the um, online translator. I can even eyeball it and correct it after it's done. I'm not sure where the translator is in the cloud or where there's going to be money to print them out. In, in the different language. So all this can be done, you know, <laughs> offline after the meeting, if there's somebody that you can plug me into. Yeah. I mean, if, if we had a sense of how many people at the Korean churches would take the survey, I think then we could justify the expense yeah. and then and ensure that the information was accurate. I, I'm a little wary to plug it in online if we don't know how reliable the results are going to be because some translator services are definitely better than others. Um, but if we could demonstrate that there was a need and a desire for this community to get it, then I think we could have a much more easy um, time to present that, you know, for funding. Yeah. Yeah. And another option would be to see if there's interest in, you know, some kind of a focus group meeting with an interpreter um, at the Korean church. Um, yeah. Because that that would be one way to you know hear from from that community. Right. Um, that might be a good way to do it. Yeah, well, and and thinking the translated surveys might be a lot of work and not get many results. I can dig around, and uh, I just don't know who to contact in this body with my results. Um, you can contact me and just let me know what you find out from from them. Um, but yeah, in terms of, of, of doing the survey um, in SurveyMonkey, it just gets messy because uh, we don't speak Korean. And so it would mean, you know, having to translate the results and, um, you know, it, it just, uh, yeah, I haven't done that before um, in Korean. Um, but I would certainly, if you can find a contact at the Korean church and make make them aware of this initiative and see if they would be interested in doing some kind of a forum. Um, I think that would probably be the best way to go. Okay, I'll get back to you. Okay, great. Um, I just have a question for Helen and uh, the Spanish translating. Um, I wonder if uh, the social worker could reach out to the church. And I don't know if we could send out a message to our volunteers and members to see who speaks Spanish and who could possibly then go to the services to be available to help people. Um, if it was kind of, you know, if the pastor or the translator could make an announcement, then the volunteers could be available to help people um, go through the paper piece of it. Um, would that be a helpful thing, Helen? I could be with, in touch with, I could send out an email requesting Spanish speaking, people who speak Spanish 
helping. And in then this. what I could do is I could talk to Juana tomorrow, uh, try to reach Juana before her Wednesday. She comes Wednesday morning, but I could try to reach her before Wednesday okay. and get a sense of what, because she goes at service, what would work. Yeah. And also, um, are there other services that she doesn't go to? Right. Um, that, to cover that more completely or as completely as we can. Right. So I'll, tr I'll reach out to her and I'll let you know, Liz. Okay, maybe I'll send out something. Um, what what I find out from her, what, what okay. she suggests. Okay, that'd be great. I'll wait for you then. Because I, I, she knows that whole setup and uh, she can probably tell me whether it would work or not. And the priest, I, I'm sure is just a visiting priest. Um, and also if there's other congregations in town. Yeah, we do other, have the. I think there are other Spanish. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. just even thinking about other Spanish-speaking congregations. Right. Um, yeah. Not to exclude others, but it's. I'm. I'm just thinking we're going to have. We could have luck. Getting people who could help with that. Right. So I could ask really. That's about, a better. Uh, that's an easier uh, language to access translators for. I could ask yeah. about other languages. So. Right. So, are, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is all, you know, doing doing surveys and engagement in other languages is the whole, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a whole challenge that's present in a lot of the communities in the area. Um, and I think Amherst is doing a great job, you know, with the Engage Amherst site, which, you know, translations aren't necessarily really good but at least it's a it's an effort and and it's something that we can hopefully build on so um anything we can do i think would be great well, i know nicole said you had only one response in spanish so far yeah so and i know i actually sent someone the link to the survey online so if it's an online spanish it was probably the one i reached out to but if we get five more or ten more spanish that's better than one so yeah and also yeah. maybe people somebody um at the at the health center would be helpful. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, the Musante Health Center. Yeah. Yeah. Which health center? Musante, you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, I just wanted to add that you know, um, this project has has done a really wonderful, beautiful job of of offering the surveys in multiple languages both in print and online. And um, perhaps this might be one of the few times that a town project has sort of incorporated other languages. And, you know, Jen Moyston said it wonderfully that this is just the beginning of opening up the conversation to non-English uh, non speakers. So if we have, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, not, the, you know, a high turnout of non-English respondents, you know, we, we would hope that over time with other surveys that the town is uh, initiating that, you know, over the next, you know, months, years, um, we, we'll be opening the door and making these communities feel more welcome and engaged to communicate uh, with the town and to be feel more connected. So this is, you know, not just a, a, a aspiration of this project. This is a long-term goal of, of reaching out to non-English speakers. Yeah, thanks. Um, so moving on to the community engagement plan, um, the, just share my screen here. Um, so we were, we had talked about having the first forum on April 25th and having that one be online and then going forward, possibly having them in person. Um, but the town manager still has not made a decision on when meetings can start in person. Um, and Haley was also had a concern about, you know, since transportation is such a big need for many older adults that it would be important to have something in person as well. Um, so um, that being said, we, we did have a really good turnout for the first meeting, um, the first online meeting. 
with 40 people there. So I think we'll get good turnout regardless of what we do. Um, but we may have to, in terms of advertising, you know, when these forums are, we may have to just do the April one and then wait. Um, or, or we can advertise the other ones and say it will either be online or in person. But um, I think I think Haley was concerned that we should maybe wait um, until we can have meetings in person. Yeah, that's definitely my preference. I think we'll get the folks who aren't as proficient with technology. And certainly, like I said, for something with transportation related, we don't have a really concrete transportation program here at the senior center. And so it's really important to hear from folks who need that service. Um, and generally, so when I've done these sort of topic-based discussions, we usually invite um, experts from, you know, that, that area. So for the transportation one, we invite someone from PBTA um, who does the bus service in town, um, someone from public works and planning, um, just in terms of, you know, what's, what's being planned for walkability and, and um, bike and pedestrian sort of access, um, safe crosswalks and that kind of thing. Um, so usually I present like what's, you know, what's the best practices for, um, an age-friendly community, and then some of what we are hearing on the survey, and, and there are, I'll tell you, a lot of comments on on being feeling safe um, walking around town. Um, so that's that's coming out of the survey, um, and yeah, and then we we just open it up for comments, and and we'll probably just write down comments. Sometimes we can, if we're in person, we can do dot voting on what people's priorities are. Um, and we'll talk about how, how we could do that online. Um, just wanna see any thoughts on this, on the outreach plan. Can I just ask a clarifying question? Is the <laughs> idea that we would go with the 25th online and everything after that would be in person and perhaps delayed or delaying the one on the 25th? I think we were thinking the 25th would be online. So okay. Would, okay, that's fine, I just wanted to clarify. If you think that's enough time to get the word out, I mean, there's, um, Engage Amherst is really good about, you know, getting a lot of people, we can put something in the paper. Um, I don't know, Haley, for your newsletter, if that's enough time. Uh, no, well, the March and April edition has already gone out, so I can only advertise for May and beyond. Okay. Oh, so perhaps maybe we should just post start the first one in May. Yeah, that's that the would, case. That would be helpful as a good starting off point. And then the farmer's market starts up in what, mid to late April? So. Something like that. So we and then tabling. Yeah, and then maybe we could maybe there would be a better chance of knowing whether things can be in person by mm -hmm. the beginning of May. So yeah. perhaps the first one would be, I think it was like May 23rd, May 23rd. Yeah. And what so, is your deadline for the senior spirit for advertising? So I'm trying to finish that up by the end of next week, if not Oof. sooner. Okay. It takes, time, takes time to print and to takes another week to package them ready for distribution to the post office. Oh, wow. So it takes about two weeks after we finalize. So in a lot of ways, by, by the end of next week, you would, you would need to know if, if the May 23rd one would be in person or virtual. Is that what you're kind of saying? I can leave it open-ended. Um, you know, we can say to be determined in person or virtual, um, ask people to RSVP um, for the event. So advertise, so is that newsletter gonna be for May and June? Yes. Okay. Um, so maybe we should advertise both of them and say, you know. May and June this, one, yep. Yeah, at this point, the May one, 
will likely be online, do you think? And then likely, unless just... I can use the housing, if I can contact the people with uh, in charge of public housing and see if we can use their community space, then we could conceivably do that in person. Mm. Okay. Perhaps, uh, Haley, maybe you, you and I can meet with uh, Mr. Bockelman mm. by, by the end of next week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be good to be able to advertise at least those two. Um, we could do the dates and the times. and um, But yeah, if you can get that, <laughs> get a better idea of that, that would be helpful. Um, what does everyone think about, I mean, we had talked about having at least one online um, to accommodate people who, you know, for whom that's actually easier. Um, just stop sharing this. It looks oh. like Rosemary. Did Rosemary. You... Am I right in hearing that you're going to postpone the first one on April 25th since the senior spirit can't advertise that one? I and think that would be a good idea. I do too. And I think that it would be wise to have the transportation one in person. Okay. So do you want to just do housing on May 23rd? Yeah, we could do housing. Oh. Housing May 23rd. And uh, in June, um, we thought it would be nice to have, um, what was the last session that was, well, hold on. Oh. Participation, community mm -hmm. safety. Mm -hmm. So we right. could just play around with the order and uh, that that wouldn't uh, matter on your end, Becky, or w would it? No, I think housing and transportation and health will, will probably draw the most people. Um, social participation, not as much, but that one would be, we were talking about having that one in June after Juneteenth because um, it had inclusion. Chad, do you had a comment? Go ahead. Yeah, it was just um, if you're having an online one for accommodation, uh, it would be a combination of all five. Oh. And that would push up uh, all your times, unfortunately, some. Um, will there be a uh, formal presentation, um, a facilitator, um, a note taker, uh, that sort of thing. Is this well structured or is it um, just um, gather what can be gathered? Um, yeah, I've done it a couple different ways. If we do it online, um, oh, I'm or at even the in person, I'm at the in person. In person, yeah. So usually I do a presentation um, and um, I've done it a couple of different ways. If it's, um, you know, we, I can take notes and show them on the screen, just in the PowerPoint point slide, or we can write it on big pads um, as people talk and then people can vote. Um, if it's a big group, we might want to split into a few smaller groups and have each one, you know, it generally what we ask is what are your main, you know, what do you think are the assets of in the community and what are the challenges and then vote on what you think are the most important. Um, oh. So just with dots, you know, we give people, everyone three dots and they can go up and it's just sort of more interactive. Um, but we can, you know, we're gonna talk about logistics definitely <laughs> before the meeting. And um, if, if anyone wants to lead a, a breakout group, that would be great. Um, so, yeah, it's just another way to, to get people to, to speak and to engage people in person. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess if we did all, all of the topics together in an online forum, um, I'm not sure when to do, are you thinking that would be in May? Start with online in May? Possibly the first one. I mean, yeah. somebody said it was the reason you're doing online is for accessibility. If you yeah. just one of those, such as uh, transportation, buildings and outdoors, then they miss the others. 
Right. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. Well, it yeah. sounds like we'll have another working group meeting in April, and hopefully there will be a more solidified plan um, for the listening sessions and uh, and clarity from from um, the town manager and the health director um, about in person and virtual, and and also we would need to speak to our, our, our IT direct um, department about you know in person meetings and projectors and all these little details uh, will need to be fleshed out. Yeah, but it'll be good to, I guess, make a decision about if we're going to do transportation as the first one or do the not online on in May. Um, and online, and I'm, I'm open to either. Um, it might make sense to do just an online open, open forum in May. Um, and then do transportation in June. I think. Well, I think we wanted to keep the social one in June for the June oh, right. complement, but we could do transportation in July, um, you know, or, or August. Yeah. July might be a little nicer because, you know, we'll have a break from the UMass crowd, you know, so it should be a little quieter around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then unless um, we, I'd be in favor of doing the housing as the first one, unless we wanted to just do a catch-all virtual at the beginning. Um, yeah, or we could do the catch-all at the end too. True. Yeah. Yeah, why don't we do housing first and then so housing in May we'll do um, June will be the social participation and inclusion and then July transportation. Um, but we'll just advertise the first two for now okay. just the June and July um, or May and June, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think housing is a good choice for the first. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's a, that's get, a big topic. Get, Let's make sure that John Hornick's available mm. for that. Right. <laughs> for that one. <laughs> good point. <laughs> of all of all of them, and so that would be uh, May twenty third. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And when is the housing? When are when is he starting work on the housing production plan? Do you know? In the fall. Okay. Okay, so we'll confirm with him if he if he can't do that one, then um, maybe we do the catch all and. Uh, well, I, I think we should just uh, adjust the date. Mm. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Um, so I guess that puts us at um, we can do another working group meeting um, on April 25th when we're going to do the first <laughs> forum. <laughs> Um, April yeah. 28th, uh, what was it? April 25th. 25th. Yeah, 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 yeah. And hopefully by then we'll have a more solidified plan, um, like logistically uh, of all the logistics, or at least for the first few listening sessions, if not for the whole series. Yeah, and I guess we could talk a little bit about, um, Haley mentioned the farmer's market and some in-person events. Um, and um, what would be useful to have at those? Because we'll probably be done with the survey or if we go through the end of April, we could have the survey at the first one. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess we can also advertise for the forums, but anything else? Um, I mean, we could have like a comments board that people could add to. Um, <clears throat> Let me just see if you had, yeah, you said one to two working group members attend in-person community events to distribute surveys, promote listening sessions and take general questions and answers. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have the farmer's market on Saturdays, the Juneteenth celebration on the 19th and then the summer concert series. 
Um, Haley, do you have folks in mind or, or is anyone from this group interested in doing some of those in-person outreach events? I can definitely do some of the farmer's markets. I know that I have a couple people I can ask to volunteer and I'm sure there are folks on the council who would be willing to help out. Okay. Um, and I'm yeah, sure I believe fire, the fire department was interested. In they it. had offered also Cress um, really mm -hmm. wants to get oh, involved yeah. with this project. So I think Earl will be down to do some farmer's markets. Haley. Great. Okay, so yeah, maybe we can, um, if you have a few volunteers, we can just talk about, you know, have a, a little sort of organizational meeting to talk about what they should present and how to get some feedback during those events. Let me um, round up some people, then I can email you. Okay. Yeah, and that'll be really perfectly timed, particularly like if, if there was one, like the end of April, the beginning of May, that would help promote mm -hmm. the whole listening uh, series yep. in general and would capture, you know, the tail end of the survey period and you could, you know, talk about other, you know, whatever other topics. But the, but the big goal would be the completion, any last minute surveys and then getting people to the listening sessions. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And also, you know, we can gather, see if we can put up a poster or something, gather comments um, or put a, we can do a link for where people can add comments online. Um, yeah, no, this is great. I think, I think you guys are getting a lot of, <laughs> a lot of input and engagement, which is great. Um, and one of the challenges going forward, and I, I, I imagine this is a challenge for the senior centers is getting people with other, of other languages involved in activities and services and just making sure everyone knows what's out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts or comments? I mean, there's just the wild idea of tabling in front of um, Stop and Shop and Big Y or, or that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, if folks are interested in doing that, um, that's fine. We could hand out surveys. Um, it's just a it's a time commitment. So, mm -hmm. um, is that something you're interested in doing, Chad? Or mostly it depends on where it goes in the timeline with the rest of the project. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I if if I knew I I had. Um, say uh, 20 surveys, I take them by hand to the two black churches, 10 at each. Um, mm -hmm. If I could have uh, 30, uh, you know, I don't know where in the in this process it would go, but I could, I could sit at a um, card table in front of, um, you know, uh, the Chamber of Commerce or whatever. Is that like the information Center. Is that where people Any of it. Are? The survey itself. I, I don't know if that that would be worthwhile, to, and when to do it in this whole process. I, I still don't know when the um, when the tabulation is going to be closed. No longer yeah. Accept, no longer accept surveys. Well, we talked about end of April. Um, okay. I I think most important is the the Spanish churches. I think that would be really great to get. Uh, um, other language speakers. I think, you know, you've, you've got, have a really good turnout so far. So I don't know how much more um, effort we really need to put in um, at this point. The only um, stat I have off the top of my head is 6% of Amherst is African American, and we have nowhere near that on, on the responses. We're, we're getting it from what I've been hearing, mm -hmm. all the systems that we've designed have been getting the same getting uh, responses from the same people somewhat. Yeah, it would be interesting. It's too bad that John Hornick was unavailable to meet today. I know that him and another uh, affordable housing trust member, uh, Sid 
Ferreira, I think is his last name. Mm -hmm. uh, they were going to, they've been providing canvassing and um, targeting towards like uh, Portuguese uh, speakers and to, I believe, um, African American uh, residents. So uh, it'll be interesting to hear an update from him um, at the next meeting um, to provide comments on that. So I, I know that they're actively um, canvassing those demographics. Yeah, and like, um, as Nicole said, the, the percentage of, um, you know, the race ethnicity percentages for people over 65 are, are not quite the same as the community as a whole. Um, and it looks like we have 4.3% Black or African-American um, overall. Yeah, so it's close. I think it's, 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 it's not too bad <laughs> for, for these types of surveys, um, but we can always do better. And it's always good to hear from communities that are generally you know, marginalized or underrepresented. So um, that's a good point. Um, Okay, well, we'll follow up with John on that too and see where, where he is with, with his survey stuff. And Mila, um, we can get you data we have so far. I don't know if you want to start looking at it if we're still getting results in. I don't know that I don't want you to spend too much time on it. No, I, I, can, I, I can start looking at the data if we have them tabulated already, make some kind of preliminary or yeah, preliminary analysis of what we have so far. Okay. Yeah, what um, SurveyMonkey will either can spit out the tables um, or we can also, I think, save it as a um, Excel document if that would be preferable. E either way, yeah. Okay. Um, so we only have a few minutes left. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all set, unless anyone has any other comments. It looks like we don't have anyone from the public, so. Great. Thank you all for your efforts. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See you in so April. We'll see you okay. April 25th at 2.30 will be the next yep. meeting. Bye. Thanks. All right, thanks, thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.